Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and while this video does contain some news content, it's not really going to be a standard news piece and will be more of a discussion surrounding Star Citizen as a whole. A topic that used to be a regular feature on my channel, but one that I have not visited for quite some time. And truth be told, I hadn't loaded up the game in months. The reason for this is due to Star Citizen still being in an early alpha stage of development, even with it being a full six years since the game's Kickstarter first launched launched back in 2012. The game seems to be caught up in a perpetual limbo of development, where the developers seem to be more focused on turning out new ships to sell than they are actually developing a workable game of any meaningful description. As a result of a dedicated core of backers with what appear to be fairly deep pockets, the game has raised a staggering $187 million as of my recording this video. However, with an extreme amount of scope creep that has infested the game, neither Star Citizen nor the original game that most people seem to have forgotten, Squadron 42, seem to be anywhere near actually being released as a full game. And as the years drag on, development costs continue to mount as running any development studio for any applicable length of time means a large amount of funds and payroll, not to mention hardware and software requirements. As a result of what one would assume to be fairly strained resources, Cloud Imperium continues to push for ship sales along with other purchasables in order to continue funding the money pit that Star Citizen has turned into. Uh, in their latest grab for funds, it was reported that Cloud Imperium had released the Legatus Ship Pack, a pack that contains a total of 117 ships, which most are variants on a few base models, and 163 extras, all for the low, low cost of $27,000. That is the advertised price. However, in order for a person to even be able to see the package on the Roberts Space Industries website, one must be a concierge tier backer, meaning one must have already spent $1,000 on the game already. If you have not spent the required thousand dollars, then when you try to visit the link for the Legatus pack, you receive a 404 error, which means the package is deliberately hidden from view unless you happen to be one of those that CIG knows is already willing to spend an extreme amount of money on an incomplete game. And I have to admit, I'm somewhat conflicted on this. From one standpoint, if a person has enough disposable income to be able to afford what many, including myself, deem to be an absolutely ridiculous thing to purchase that's still entirely your choice. If you want to spend the equivalent cost to a fairly decent brand new car on digital goods for an incomplete game, that is entirely your choice. Well done for being affluent enough to be able to do that if that's your wish. However, for those of you that are not financially secure enough to be able to do so, please don't. At one point in time, I was optimistic for Squadron 42. I looked forward to the concept of a new Chris Roberts space sim game in which I got to play through a single player campaign that was the spiritual successor to the Wing Commander games that I so loved in my youth. And then after completing that single player campaign, being able to then take my character and bring them into a space sim MMO that sounded very reminiscent of freelancer in general theory and design, and I thought to myself this. This is what I've been waiting for, and I know I wasn't alone in thinking that. But also, this is the dangers of hype in all of its unmitigated glory. Originally, Squadron 42 was the game on offer, and Star Citizen was the stretch goal, which it has turned into since then is nothing short of a circus, born of both excitement and greed. We watched it happen as the core concept had people fully buying into the hype of a crowdfunded Chris Roberts game and throwing money at him with wild abandon. As the original asking amount of $500,000 was grossly exceeded to the tune of over $4 million, people begun to see their hopes of a new space sim realized with star voice actors like Mark Hamill and Gary Oldman being brought on. I even recall expressing my own disappointment that they failed to get Tom Wilson, the actor that portrayed the character Todd Marshall, or as he was better known by his call sign, Maniac, in for at least a cameo appearance in the game. However, as people kept throwing money at the game, they kept coming up with more and more stretch goals, which were consistently met and exceeded. This caused a tremendous amount of scope creep and forced them into a situation where the promised scope of the game most likely vastly exceeds their capabilities to ever be able to complete. A Star Citizen now is little more than a joke in most circles, and yet there are people that continue to throw money at the game. Some even do so out of a desire to make certain that the game is completed, which I could certainly see the reasoning behind that. It is something that I know a lot of Star Citizen backers hate to hear, but it is an expression of the sunk cost fallacy, which is very easily summed up with a very old phrase, in for a penny, in for a pound. 
There are also those that legitimately feel that even with their throwing thousands of dollars at the game, despite it being a very early alpha, they still feel they've gotten their money's worth out of the game, and if so, that's great. Good for you. We most definitely place different levels of importance on a dollar and how much it is worth to us, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the game is, as it currently stands, not in the clear. They continue to sell digital goods at ridiculous pricing levels, and this $27,000 package is the latest expression of that. And as the hype continues, at least in some circles, there will be people who will buy this ship pack. And it is this hype behind a crowdfunding game that underscores two of the biggest dangers with a game like this one. The first large danger is that this is a crowdfunded game. This is, for all intents and purposes, not really any different than an early access title. As such, there's no guarantee whatsoever that this game, or I should say these games as they keep moving the bar on that, will ever be completed. Also, the developers keep moving the bar, as I said, on this, which they can get away with because there's no publisher holding their feet to the fire. They even went so far as to take Squadron 42 and break it up into an episodic title. This would give them the added benefit of not having to develop as large of a game out of the gate and will also allow them to charge customers more for the game as it is now broken up into segments. Now, even by buying themselves that extra breathing room, there has been and still is no release date, even an estimated release date since October of 2016. And here we are nearly two full years later and we still have no idea when or even if this game will ever be released. And a lot of this is, I hate to say it, largely due to the simple fact that there was no one at the helm of the company with any experience in modern game design, and as such, there was no one keeping an eye out for the pitfalls and trappings that could doom the game like scope creep. This is a unique situation due to the game's crowdfunded status, and if a publisher were involved, they would have kept the developers from running wild with stretch goals and would keep them on task with getting a finished product into the hands of customers as opposed to spending time promoting and selling ships. The second large danger ties into that, which is the lack of accountability. It's a bit like kids being left with a room full of candy and their parents are nowhere to be found. Some children will be well-mannered, knowing mom and dad will be back and to avoid overindulging themselves. However, in the case of Chris Roberts and Cloud Imperium Games, they know there were no parents to begin with, and so they began stuffing as many sweets down their gobs as fast as they possibly could, behaving in an absolutely gluttonous manner, as opposed to being mindful of what is actually important. They created stretch goals after stretch goals and became the largest crowdfunded game ever based solely on two aspects. One being that there are many adults who actually have money who truly want a meaningful space sim adventure and the fact that it had a Chris Roberts name attached to it. That alone generated a great deal of hype over a game that is still, for all intents and purposes, sight unseen. And therein lies the danger when you couple hype with crowdfunding, because you see, if the game fails to be released or if it ends up being nowhere near what you envisioned, your money supposedly went into development of that game that money will be gone and you will almost certainly be unable to get it back. Crowdfunding is a terrible idea in most circumstances for exactly this reason. There is a lack of consumer protection and there is an extreme risk, one that many people will not mind making and one that others may not necessarily be aware of. Yes, publishers are greedy scum that typically enforce predatory monetizations within video games these days, and I would prefer not even to be in the same room as any of them, but they do create a barrier there that can be beneficial to consumers under certain circumstances. They do push their developers to meet deadlines. They do lean on them for results, which is something that crowdfunding companies like Cloud Imperium Games are simply capable of ignoring. They also provide protection in the form of it being them that ponies up the money for development as opposed to the end user. Gamers can then buy the end product and if it is not up to their standards, they can then refund it and get their money back. This potential of refunds also creates a standard of quality that publishers are at least peripherally aware of as they do want to make their money back as quickly as possible. Granted, their standards are typically woefully inadequate, but they are there, which is simply not the case when it comes to a crowdfunded game. With crowdfunding, they claim that you are the publishers, which is how that relationship should be interpreted and maintained. They should be ultimately answerable to those backers of the game. However, with Cloud Imperium, they've figured out that they can all but ignore even their own promises made to backers and be able to get away with it. They simply don't have to answer to you. They got their money, and as long as they do just enough to be able to have something to point to and say they did something, that's all that really matters to them in this case. It's a terrible and toxic relationship 
relationship that is made worse with expressions of either desperation or extreme greed like this $27,000 ship pack because realistically, that is the only message that is being sent with a package like this. Yes, they offer up the same tired line of people were asking for this, but all it does is paint one of two pictures and neither one of them is a good look at all for a development company working on a game six years down the road and $187 million later. It says to people either that Cloud Imperium is slowly going broke or that they just want more money for the sake of getting more money because why not? That brand new mansion isn't going to pay for itself. And do yourselves a favor, be wary of backing crowdfunded games. If you do decide to back one, do so to modest levels. Also, and this goes for the entire gaming industry, don't buy into the hype. Hype brought us No Man's Sky. Hype brought us Rise, Son of Rome. Hype brought us Aliens, Colonial Marines. Hype brought us Star Wars Battlefront. And Hype brought us the Star Citizen Pre-Alpha, which they currently call an alpha. Don't buy into the hype. Sometimes it ends well, but it is never a good thing to gamble on. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.